Hi, now I will let you know in this tutorial regarding the remaining features of sheet metal. So for that, let us open, let's say a new path, okay. And uh, now when you go to sheet metal, uh, I told you about some of the features, but here I can see there are many features which are remaining, which will be covered in this topic. So now let us start sorry now let us start with one of the topic which is rip so for rip uh, before making a rip I will let you know how to make that rip so I will make a front plane and in that I will make a normal sketch as usual let it be uh, a rectangle and then I will make in solid extra boss so I'll make in solid okay I want height let's say this big that's alright and now uh, in earlier days when uh, we had our solid works but we didn't have this sheet metal <coughs> feature the tool of sheet metal what we used to do how we used to create sheet metal parts in solid works we used to make a block kind of thing and then we used to shell it so this is a shell option okay i sh want to shell it and i want to this face as my shell and this is 10 so I don't want 10 let's say my shell thickness should be around uh, 3 mm okay or else that's a 2.5 mm all right this is my shell so in older days people used to do like this this is shell and but now what now this how the edges are joined with each other whereas in sheet metal achieving this thickness this tolerance is a bit difficult yeah because you bend it and then you fold it so it's become difficult so for this when you go to sheet metal now and use the option rip so you click on the rip and then it shows like the rip parameters adjust to rip so you need to select the edges so it's very easy not to keep in mind that you need to select this face or this face or this face when you bring your mouse you adjust to rip which means you need to select an edge so this is the edge when you select the edge you will find two arrows Okay, again I want to select this edges to rip. Again, you felt two arrows. Okay. Now it says uh, change direction and this, but that's fine for now. Let us see how rip feature works. Okay, we need to rip and bring it close. Look, this is a part, and these are the two different parts. So yes, definitely when you make a part from a sheet metal then definitely this will be a thing like when you select one face the bottom face and you uh, bring four sides one two three four and you want to join it or you need to weld it then definitely this kind of structure you will see okay you won't see such kind of structures you will always see this kind of structures so this resembles uh, very close with the sheet metal object so this is how the feature works but one more thing like uh, about the direction let's say when I go to edit feature and I want to change the direction look can you see can you observe something change the direction let's see the two arrows I will click one of the arrows this one only this arrow okay so now difference I will you will come to know there are two arrows here there is one arrow here okay look there were two things over here but here you will find only one thing and one thing means look this is how if you want to assemble your part so only one arrow there is only extrusion only on the one side and the other side goes in this is the other side this is the one side so this is how you can do your work and let's say if you want to place uh, on the edge okay here somewhere then you know to go to rip and then adjust to rip will be this okay and this and uh, this rip can be applied on both the sides okay and keep in mind this is 0 0.1 okay so I'm gonna make it okay look here you can see again the same thing and now what is 0 0.1 so the distance between the gap between the both the edges this distance is 0 0.1 here you if you want to vary the distance let's say it is 0.1 i want to vary it 0.5 all right then make it okay then this gap will increase which means 
this is the distance it depends like how far you want to keep that distance and then when you uh, rip all the edges it looks like a sheet metal part okay but uh, this is just a very close resemblance to the sheet metal part not the exit but f if you want to be very exit and very clear then what you need to do okay what you need to do for that I won't use the rip option for that I will do another option and for that I will close this thing I won't save this and then I will open a new part okay now let's say if I am drawing something and uh, in the sketch uh, I have a profile let's say this is my hexagon here this big and in features if I want to extrude it let's say 100 uh, or let's say 80 okay I want to extrude it okay extrude it now what is this this is just a cylindrical this is just a block a hexagonal block now if I want to convert this whole part into a sheet metal how to do there are two things in earlier days as I told you what you need to do is you need to make a shell and then after making a shell uh, you need to choose the edges and rip and all those things but a shortcut method is sheet metal directly and this is a convert to sheet metal click when you click on this options now you will find a transparent block over here and you need to do something here now what you need to do is you need to select this this is select a fixed entity so now uh, you want to fix something so I want to fix a, a thing is this is my fixed entity this one okay I selected my fixed entity and now uh, let's say here it comes to bend edges so this is select edges faces that represent bends so there are six faces one two three four five six a hexagonal has a six edges and then I will start selecting the bends so I will select this edge one okay can you see the difference I selected one bend again I will select another bend over here yeah I will start selecting the bends one two three and the last one four okay I have selected the bends and can you find the gap it's written gap default radius default gap default so when you zoom in you will find some gap there are some gaps okay now I'll make it okay look now I have made my solid part into a sheet metal part and look how good it looks when you zoom in look this exactly looks like a sheet metal no need to do anything very simple just an option so no need to rip anything or something very easy and very good now some optimization can be done on this part through this is uh, convert solid so again I will edit feature okay now what you can see from here is this is the thickness sheet thickness how much sheet thickness you want to keep so this is 1.2 let's say I want it 5 millimeter and after keeping it 5 millimeter it becomes very thick and look for the bottom how it looks so you can control the sheet thickness this is 5 and there are again two options when you see you can see a transparent block over here this is a transparent block and inside there uh, a sheet metal part is being formed and here you can see reverse thickness reverse thickness means this sheet metal part is inside when I click reverse thickness it will come out look look it is coming out of the block now this is the block end and it comes out when you again keep reverse thickness it goes in the block so this is one thing and the second thing is this the thickness I don't want this let's say I want only 2 millimeters enter and this is 2 millimeters thickness and this is the radius 2.5 so as you can see the uh, radius default it's written here over here somewhere so let's see I want it 5 millimeter now 5 enter look my radius increases yeah my gap increases my radius increases and the bends I shown you how I selected come down here rip edges found which means this feature has inbuilt rip edges so no need to rip 
afterwards so it is already done when you are making this feature ripping is already done okay so this are this is about rip edges but this is about rip sketches let's say for example uh, you are making a sketch and in that sketch if you want to do some kind of ripping option then this will be helpful but this is a feature so here i'm not using this now when you again come down here it shows corner defaults so this is the corner and this shows like the two edges are touching each other yeah like this in this fashion i'll show you like this you'll understand clearly yeah and when you click here as i shown you overlap so how our overlap works look this is kind of overlap structure which is made look this and this is underlap look this is underlap but i will use only this because i am comfortable with this one and this shows a distance this is 2 millimeters let's say to be 5 millimeters look 5 millimeters let's say 1.5 the gap between both this is 1.5 and this distance yeah when you click here overlap and after clicking on overlap when you arrange this is to let's say 2 then again it changes please enter number between 0 and 1 okay so it shows a default gap only should be between 0 and 1 so here yeah, 0 0.5 was good but somehow I'm not using this feature I'm using this feature this thing corner default as my open butt so <coughs> I don't need this now one more good thing I'll show you look from the bottom as you can see is a kind of arrow structure which is sharp it is very sharp now this sharp thing is the auto relief and this auto relief is called or brown the relief type is or brown now let's say I want rectangular look when I click on the rectangular the shape changes and the shape will become look the sharpness goes away and kind of fillet is being applied so this is a very good thing like you no need to go and start selecting the fillet option and then do it when you select the auto relief in the auto relief will find look the curvatures are automatically done and it shows the 0 0.5 let's say 1.5 and if I make it 1.5 it changes look very good and great and this is rectangular let's say uh, if I want to change my relief type then I will say tier I want it tier and what happens is look this is tier it is very simple directly very straight no arrows or nothing very straight and this becomes tier so this is a good option for me this is again all brown I will select all brown for now for time being yeah now I'll make it ok and let's see how our part looks yeah so this is how our part looks from the top and look from the bottom how it looks this is my part now once my part is ready what I will be doing is I will use uh, another option and in another option let's say uh, the option is the corners inside the corners we find three type of corner closed corner which I already ta taught you welded corner and break corner so I will start with the break corner in the break corner it's very simple very easy just click a face when you click here corner edges and or flange faces you can do anything edge or face let us start with an edge when you click an edge click here look it shows a kind of chamfer thing a chamfer is applied this is a chamfer this is my radius okay when you click here it becomes radius and how far how big you want let's say 8 millimeters which is more let's say if you want this this will be look great option really great option you select the edges this is how I selected my edges yeah look I will delete this because by mistake I selected my face so I will delete this I want the edge zoom in and this is my edge okay this is my edge and I will make it okay for now look it goes away how beautiful it goes away this is not a curve because of my graphics card problem but yeah it's great now again the same feature 
corners and break corner now I'll select the face when I once I select my face look how everything is selected look and I'll make it ok there are some problems because of this thing so let us try this thing if this is this is happening ok now since this is not working what I need to do is reduce my radius which is I will make it 4 and let's try ok yeah it's done now this is working so this was about the break corner corner trim now I will use another option which is known as the welded corner when you come to welded corner you just need to select select a side face of a sheet metal corner to be welded so I'm welding something you know there are some open corners and everything and if I want to weld it to look it good so I will select this face I selected this face but nothing is happening here again it shows click on the vertex or edge or face to specify a stopping point so I will click but it's not working anymore click here and click here it's not working yeah so just close it when it is not working why it is not working you need to know because I selected the all brown shape this is what I feel now again when I go to corner convert solid edit feature and then this is my box yeah this is my box and then again when I come down over here some and in the auto relief when I select tier yeah if I come to tier selection this is my tier and I'll make it ok once I make it ok uh, let's see how our tier option worked this is my tier option although I selected a chamfer on this edges you know if you remember I selected chamfer on this edges yeah this goes away at the bottom when you zoom in you won't find any chamfer here because now my uh, the trim type has been changed and it is the uh, the auto relief type has been changed uh, and now let's say uh, if I want to do the corner the welded corner here let us select this edge for now and click here look it shows something look it fills the gap it fills a gap in the great way look how greatly it does its work and then okay see how smooth and fine this work is done so you will come to know that uh, after welding how it looks so this is a great thing again when I want to select this let's see if it works because the both the sides edges are different yeah so here uh, this is a welded corner I will select this one yes look can you see can you observe it fills this gap also and I want to add a welding symbol here and here this is add fillet what happens if I don't do uh, add fillet thing yeah if I don't do an add fillet thing then definitely it shows a sharp edge you know it fills everything it shows a sharp edge but actually this is a welded corner when you weld it you won't get such kind of sharpness so it's always good to add a fillet and in fillet you can adjust your radius which I want to keep it as 2 for now yeah so this add texture if I don't want to add the texture that's all right as you can see here uh, some kind of texture is there there is no texture over here so I'll make it ok once I make it ok look first of all there are no texture and it's very simple and uh, here it shows a welding symbol look can you see this arrow it shows a welding symbol over here yeah look from here this is my and it shows that there is some welding over here done with 2mm radius now I will close this thing okay and since I made my part what I will do is I want to teach you another feature and for that let's say hmm, on this face I want to draw something right click and I want to do a sketch let's say I will draw a circle here a uh, circle would be from this point and uh, this big this is 8 uh, that's alright or let it be 6 yeah okay now 
this sketch should be normal and after making it normal we'll draw some center lines from this point to this point and uh, escape again one center line from this point from the center point yeah this is my center point up till this point yeah here somewhere and then back now trim entities and power trim and when you zoom it how do you use your option power trim click here hold your mouse and then swipe like this done power trim is done because if you click an edge it won't work so click here hold and again control Z trim over here somewhere when you click it over here nothing happens with the option power trim but you click here swipe it on the left done okay so this is my trim so this is done now what I will do is I will use a this is my let's say this is my front plane yeah so I want to use option reference geometry sorry I'll come out of the sketch then I'll use reference geometry plane and this parallel to this plane at a distance of 10 that's okay this is okay and on this plane I'll make it normal and then I'll draw the same thing what I did same sketch I want to make it so from here I got my center but I will draw and it will be let's say 4 almost 4 millimeters 4.5 okay and circle is made now again I will select the center lines same to same center lines from here to here and escape and again the same center line I will select from here to here zoom in till here again escape and then use the trim options power trim and then click your swipe done okay so since this is done now I will use one option come out and now my option will be sheet metal lofted pen so click on the lofted pen as you can see you can click the two edges one and then two over here here my lofting is done so you need to keep in mind in sheet metal yeah uh, always you need to keep some clearance otherwise your loft won't work as in case of solids and surfaces your loft will not work if you select only circles you need to uh, keep some clearance some distance because in the sheet metal part and always in a sheet metal you use such kind of thing every time so now one more thing here will be the thickness so if I increase the thickness look it increases my this thickness to three look now again this is my thickness of my sheet metal part it depends on how you how far you want to keep this is let's say I want to keep it one millimeter thick yeah or less than one millimeter which will be 0 0.8 yeah and this number of bend lines but this option let's say look this is my part my lofted part and again edit feature it looks thick but that's alright number of bend lines is 7 but uh, maximum deviation is 0.5 millimeters and number of bent lines is 7 but this is not useful in this case it might be useful for the advanced options but for now let us keep this thing and now once my base is ready or some kind of stands are ready so this is one feature I can mirror it on the other sides on the four sides and this acts as my stand for the part and now let's see uh, what I need to do with this option is now you're after making this I will try to unfold it or to make it flat let's see what options features are working here flatten is uh, deactivated so I cannot flatten this easily but I can unfold it so I'll click the option unfold and I'll click here yeah I need to select a fixed face let's see to select a fixed face over here somewhere 
and let's try if I can select any of my bends to unfold it this and faces this or this or this is not working yeah so I'll close this thing and let's see this is a flat pattern as you can see there are two flat patterns this is one and this is two so I will unsuppress it sorry I'll suppress it like this after suppressing it again flatten is not activated so let us see will option use the unfold and let us see this is my fixed face and this is my bend okay now see I can unfold this thing look this is open how now we'll come to know like what kind of material is actually actually required in f to cut a sheet metal part and what is the curvature and everything and afterwards you can just bend it okay so now this is unfold so what I will do is I'll fold it when I click fold I'll click this okay again back to normal it is folded now now this was about the lofting feature lofted band again if you want to use your a feature called insert band but this is inactivated now what how you use the insert band so for that uh, let us see I will open a new part okay and in the new part uh, let us see in the front plane if I'm making or drawing something sketch and then a circle and then features and extruding it in extruding I will use let's say uh, 100 millimeters and the thin feature in thin feature what happens is click here and this is 10 millimeters so no need to do two sketches and all directly a thin feature I'll make it two millimeters yeah and this is my solid part is ready okay my solid cylinder is ready so but this is a solid part so here I will make it normal as a region and I'll make it this normal and unclick here and then sketch in sketch directly uh, I'll select this face and in the line uh, directly without any markings or anything uh, let's say I want to do a cut extrude cut from your features extrude cut and say uh, this this should over here like this but you know this is not my sheet metal part because this is my solid part which I extruded it but now if I want to unfold it or flatten it let's say in cylinder I cannot use the flatten I cannot use the fold or unfold you know I'm not able to use in solids but I can use the option insert pen to convert this in, into sheet metal here if you click you can see look creates a sheet metal part from the existing part so this is my existing part and I want to create a sheet metal part so here I want to insert a bend so insert bends and then click on this edge once you click on this edge you know there are again key factor and auto relief and many things but just click ok once you click it ok now my part is converted into sheet metal how do you know you can flatten it look I made it flat so you, I can make it unflat so this is my again I can unfold unfold it so here I want to make my unfold thing so let us say the fixed face is this face and bench to unfold will be this and make it ok no unfolding is not working let's say my fixed face is this face and this I will delete it and I will also delete this thing again let's say I am not able to select this thing this face and this face and we'll try something so unfolding your unfolding is not working I'll close it but flatten is working so this is my part flatten but if I select no bands I will select no bands when I select this when it is no on no bands I cannot make it flat because if there are no bands this is again a solid part and not a sheet metal part when I untake this thing now it becomes a sheet metal part and I can make it flat now again I'm flat so this is how my bend, insert bend and no bends feature works. Now again one more feature, uh, two more features I want to teach you. For that again I will make it okay. And for that let's say my front plane is this 
and uh, I'll sketch something and this is my line okay and this is one of the things and in sheet metal I use base flange this becomes my base flange and I'll make it let's say uh, yeah, 50 yeah okay and uh, after making it okay uh, one more thing here I can also show you uh, about my not this one close this thing edit feature this one you can use also the feature gauge table when you click here it shows a table in that table you use sample table steel once you click this thing you understand like what kind of steel things you are using and uh, it shows automatically 3 gauge so according to the part 3 gauge 11 4 gauge as the number of gauge thickness increases the thickness of the part decreases so I'll use 13 gauge yeah and uh, make it okay so this is 13 gauge and here you can see the thickness is this 2.27 yeah close this thing now again I'll make this thing as normal yeah I made it normal and after making it normal I want to do a sketch again let us see like this and on which face this is my face and this is my sketch from here somewhere I'm drawing a sketch back sheet metal base flange this selection and yeah this should be 80 this big enter 80 is too big 50 yes looks a bit bigger that's all right now I will use a feature called as mm, chalk so how to use the feature jog when I click on the job it sh shows me I want to click this I clicked this edge okay and then sheet metal jog chalk feature cannot be created from a sketch with a single line all right delete this sketch back this is my plane I don't want this plane delete automatically plane is created while a jog thing is done I will directly create a jog and I will select a line okay and uh, or else again delete this thing delete escape here this is my sketch again back plane is created delete many a times uh, it creates problem again I will select the chalk and I will select this plane this face and uh, whether the jog is working or not that's a question same thing is happening I'm not able to create a jog so what I need to do is now what I need to do is this should be normal uh, or else you can say this should be normal no I don't want that let's say the front plane to be normal no top plane to be normal yes and here what I'll do is I'll just sketch I will draw a line and I will draw a line from here to here yeah this is my line back once I drew my line but this is not on the surface so control Z I don't want this line let's select this yeah and right click and then I want to do on this face or else I don't mind drawing my line on this face so this is what I want to do is to keep my line over here yeah from here to here escape and zoom in a little bit find a gap 
close this gap and my line is ready but this line is here so I don't want here so again control Z control Z this is a very wrong thing so this is your top lane this is this is your top lane yeah and I drew a line on my top lane so select here and features on this plane if I want to do something let's say I want to draw a line on this face so it will be on this face again not working escape control Z so select this face come out of everything select this face and then start drawing a line on this face from this point to this point and again come out now see the line is on this face once you can see the line on this face what you can do is you can just go to the sheet metal and start the jog in the jog you select this line once this line is selected is a fixed face yeah and this is my line once you select the line you can see your jog look this is my jog here use the default radius I will select untick this and once I untick this I want to make it one millimeter yeah enter it comes down yeah this one millimeter comes down let's say this to be 0 0.8 millimeters yeah and this is my jog offset line I can select up to the vortex or anything if this is blind and this is one I'll select it the height adjustment is done over here yeah and here when you click here look how the jog starts this is my line and but my jog starts from this point now here when I make it here or I can make it to dimension positions how my dimensioning is done I'll select is not fixed so here here in here the dimensioning are different this is from end to end no this is from the upper face to end this is from the upper face in, in between and this is end to end yeah how the dimensioning is calculated this, because this one millimeter when you select this is from here to here in this one millimeter is here to here but here one millimeter is from here to here so it depends I will select this and my jog positions are look keep this blue line in mind and as I told you earlier you can vary look comes in when you select this it comes totally in for now I want this kind of or I want this kind of jog at least and this will make my jog I'll select let's say okay shows jog offset specified 0.19 millimeter is less than minimum of 6.5 mm jog offset will be 6.5 please note of okay yes this is done now see why I'm doing a jog because I want to connect both these parts together but connecting both these parts together with the help of in, in sheet metal is a kind of difficult job and different job here now what I did I created a jog jog is nothing but a curvature from one part to another but now I want to extend this edge if I want to extend this is what I need to do is I need to extend this but I will use this point or this point and then I will use my sketch and I will use a rectangle from this point let us see I can I, if I'm able to do it or not let's select this face yeah and sketch and in sketch let us say a rectangle and from this point I will draw a rectangle up till here somewhere zoom in here somewhere and now I can arrange using smart dimensions how zoom in where is my point this is my point how big or small I want this 36 let's say I want it 25 yeah or let's say 
I want this is as 15 this is 15 but keep in mind make it okay keep in mind that this should always start from this end this point that is very necessary so once this is ready don't worry go to sheet metal and you will find base step base flange step so I taught you about base flange but now the time is base step so what is tab so this is my tab once you make this thing and you click the option tab automatically this is selected and now I can see look this is done I'll make it okay and my sheet metal my this thing is ready yeah and once I click this again I click base so you can also extend this so you can select this and you can select the sheet metal and base this thing sketches no control geometry you can do many things you can play with this for now back and for now I taught this like how to create a jog and extend it now I want to use one more feature called hem what is hem from the curvature from the symbol itself this is my hem this is my edge and uh, this 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 one your edge edges you need to select how far my hem goes if you want to use such kind of curvature things then hem is a very good option again there are two options look from end to end from this point itself you want to make your hem or from this point uh, the curvature should pass from this point so very simple to understand I will make from this point and your different kinds of hem types and size this is one of the type which is called a flat hem but it overlaps so I don't want this overlapping thing I can do overlap but I will do I will flip the direction in case of overlaps so here with a small radius again here again like this like the curvature is moving inside again like this kind of structure but for now I'll use this kind of hem thing and I can increase the length I can also increase the radius this is my, or in, term, uh, in terms of distance this is helping me and edit with him and what kind of hem is looking and so here I will do finish for now and my hem is ready look so this were some of the options of sheet metal and uh, mostly as you can see I covered most of the options of sheet metal here but out of this mostly I use the option called convert to sheet metal because I drew some objects and then if I want to make into sheet metal then it really helps me how to convert the particular object if at all it's a kind of complex structure then definitely this option will help a lot in order for me to understand how to make a sheet metal part to visualize a sheet metal part is being visualized and afterwards we make we make it flatten once this flatten is done then uh, I directly go to my 2d sketch I make my 2d sketch and then the dimensions and all and after from that dimensions we will really come to know how much sides to cut and what to do and how much actual sheet metal in millimeter cubes are required to make the part thank you